Commander Zach Slith of the Arcturian Diplomatic Corps had always prided himself on his ability to read between the lines. It was a skill that had served him well in his centuries-long career, allowing him to navigate the treacherous waters of interstellar politics with unparalleled finds. But as he stared at the holographic display before him, he felt a creeping sense of unease that he couldn't quite shake. The image showed a human diplomatic vessel, the Harmony docked with a Phalon trade ship in high orbit around Sirius B. The two species had been locked in tense negotiations over mining rights in the system for months, and this meeting was supposed to be the culmination of those efforts. But something wasn't right. Computer, Enhanced Sector 4. B. Zach Slith commanded, his four eyes narrowing as he focused on a small device clutched in the hand of a human aide standing just out of view of the main camera. The image zoomed in, revealing a object unlike any human technology Zach Slith had ever seen. Its surface seemed to writhe and shift, as if alive. A chill ran down his spine, causing his blue skin to ripple with unease. Analysis, he barked. The computer's neutral voice filled the room. Object unknown. Material composition does not match any known human technology. Energy signature detected, but unable to classify. Zach Slith's tentacles twitched with irritation. How could an advanced AI be unable to classify an energy signature? It didn't make sense. None of this made sense. Humans were supposed to be the pinnacle of evolution, or so the Galactic Concordat had believed. Their file and species registry listed them as having achieved a perfect balance of intellect, empathy, and technological prowess. First contact with Earth had been a momentous occasion, celebrated across a thousand worlds. But in recent years, Zach Slith had begun to notice discrepancies, subtle inconsistencies in human behavior that didn't quite align with their purported nature. It was nothing he could put his tentacle on definitively just a nagging feeling that something was off. And now this. A device that shouldn't exist in the hands of a species that was supposed to be an open book. Zach Slith's comm unit chirped, startling him out of his reverie. Commander, came the voice of his assistant, Vexler. The Concordat Council is requesting your presence. They're about to begin the session on the serious agreement. Understood, Zach Slith replied his voice steady despite the turmoil in his mind. I'm on my way. As he made his way through the gleaming corridors of the Concordat's headquarters on Arcturus Prime, Zach Slith couldn't shake the feeling that he was missing something crucial. The humans had been members of the Concordate for over a century now, and in all that time, they had never shown any inclination towards deception or aggression. They were known throughout the galaxy as mediators, peacekeepers, the voice of reason in a chaotic universe. So why did he feel like he was standing on the edge of a precipice, about to discover something that would shatter that illusion forever? The council chamber was a marvel of alien architecture, a vast dome of living crystal that pulsed with soft, multicolored light. Representatives from all 12 species of the Concordat were present, their forms as varied as the worlds they hailed from. Zach Slith took his place among the Arcturian delegation, nodding respectfully to his peers. At the center of the chamber stood Ambassador Lyra Novak, the human representative. She was a tall woman with striking green eyes and an air of quiet confidence that seemed to fill the room. Zach Slith had always admired her poise, but now he found himself studying her with a more critical eye. Honored representatives of the Concordat, Lyra began, her voice clear and strong. I am pleased to report that after months of negotiation, we have reached an agreement with the Phalon Consortium regarding the mining rights in the Sirius system. A murmur of approval rippled through the assembly. The Sirius dispute had been a thorny issue, threatening to disrupt the delicate balance of power in that sector of space. Its resolution was indeed cause for celebration. The terms of the agreement are as follows, Lyra continued, outlining a series of compromises and concessions that seemed, on the surface, to be fair and equitable to both parties. 
But as Zack Slythe listened, he couldn't shake the image of that strange device from his mind. What was its purpose? And why had it been present at such a crucial meeting? Mm. And finally, Lyra was saying, Earth has agreed to provide the Phalons with access to our latest terraforming technology in exchange for a 30 share of all rare Earth elements extracted from the Sirius B asteroid belt. This announcement was met with a chorus of surprised exclamations. Human terraforming technology was highly advanced, and they had always been reluctant to share it freely. For them to offer it as part of this deal was unprecedented. The Phalon representative, a being of living crystal named Zinzire, chimed happily. We are most pleased with this arrangement, it said, its voice a melodious tinkling. The Phalon Consortium looks forward to a long and prosperous partnership with Earth. As the Council erupted into discussion, Zaxlith found his gaze drawn to the human delegation. They all wore expressions of quiet satisfaction, as if everything was going according to plan. But there was something in their eyes. A glint of... What? Triumph. Anticipation. He couldn't quite place it, but it made his skin crawl. The session concluded with a formal ratification of the serious agreement, and as the representatives began to file out of the chamber, Zach Slith made a decision. He needed more information, and he knew just where to start. Ambassador Novak, he called out, gliding over to where Lyra stood conversing with a group of Tellarite delegates. Might I have a word? Lyra turned to him, her smile warm and welcoming. Of course, Commander Zach Slith. What can I do for you? Zach Slith led her to a quiet corner of the chamber, away from prying ears. I was wondering if you could clarify something for me, he began, keeping his tone casual. The terraforming technology you're offering the Phalons. It's quite a generous gesture. I'm curious about the reasoning behind it. Lyra's smile never wavered. Well, Commander, we've always believed in the power of cooperation. This technology has the potential to transform barren worlds into habitable ones. By sharing it, we're not just helping the Phalons. We're opening up new possibilities for expansion and growth throughout the Concordate. It was a good answer, logical and altruistic. Exactly what one would expect from a human but Zach Slith couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to it. And the device your aide was carrying during the negotiations? He asked, watching her reaction closely. I couldn't help but notice it. It seemed unusual. For the briefest moment, something flickered in Lyra's eyes. Surprise. Alarm. But it was gone so quickly that Zach Slith almost thought he had imagined it. I'm afraid I don't know what you're referring to, Commander, Lyra said, her tone apologetic. My aides carry various tools and devices to assist with negotiations, but I'm not aware of anything unusual. Perhaps you could describe it. Zach Slith hesitated. He had hoped to catch her off guard, to elicit some kind of revealing reaction, but Lyra's response was perfectly neutral, giving him nothing to work with. It's not important, he said finally. I must have been mistaken. Thank you for your time, Ambassador. As he watched Lyra walk away, Zach Slith felt a sense of frustration building within him. He was sure there was something going on, but he had no proof, no concrete evidence to support his suspicions. Just a nagging feeling and a glimpse of a strange device. But he wasn't about to give up. Over the next few weeks, Zaxlith threw himself into his investigation with a fervor that bordered on obsession. He pored over records of human activity within the Concordat, looking for patterns or anomalies that might shed light on his suspicions. He reached out to contacts in other species' as intelligence agencies, probing for any information they might have on unusual human behavior or technology. Most of what he found only served to reinforce the human's reputation as peaceful mediators and technological innovators. There were countless accounts of human diplomats resolving conflicts between other species, of human scientists 
making breakthrough discoveries that benefited the entire Concordate. But there were also oddities, small inconsistencies that, taken individually, meant little but when viewed as a whole, painted a picture that was increasingly troubling. Reports of human ships appearing in restricted areas of space, only to vanish without a trace when confronted. Rumors of secret research facilities hidden on remote worlds. And most intriguingly, whispers of a shadowy organization within human society, operating outside the bounds of their official government. None of it was concrete enough to bring before the Council. Zaxlith knew that without solid evidence, his concerns would be dismissed as paranoia, or worse, an attempt to undermine the human standing within the Concordate. He needed a breakthrough, and he needed it soon. That breakthrough came in the form of an encrypted message delivered to his personal terminal in the dead of night. The sender was anonymous, but the content made Zaxlith's hearts race. The truth lies beneath the surface of Mars. Coordinates enclosed. Attached to the message were the coordinates for a location in the Valles Marineris, the massive canyon system that scarred the face of the red planet. Mars had been one of the first worlds colonized by humans when they expanded beyond the solar system, and it remained a vital hub of human activity to this day. Zaxlith knew it was probably a trap. Every instinct honed by centuries of diplomatic service screamed at him to report this to his superiors, to let the proper authorities investigate. But the part of him that had always prided itself on uncovering the truth, on seeing what others missed, wouldn't let him ignore this lead. Decision made, he booked passage on the next transport to Mars, using his diplomatic credentials to bypass the usual travel restrictions. As the ship broke orbit around Arcturus Prime, Zaxlith couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and dread. Whatever he found on Mars, he was certain it would change everything. The journey to Mars took three standard days, during which Zaxlith alternated between reviewing his notes on the human mystery and trying to prepare himself for whatever he might find at the coordinates. When the ship finally touched down at Olympus Mons spaceport, he wasted no time in securing a personal transport and setting out for Valles Marineris. The Martian landscape was a study in reds and browns, broken only by the gleaming domes of human settlements and the winding channels of the planet's nascent, terraforming efforts. As Zach Slith's transport skimmed over the surface, he couldn't help but marvel at the humans' ability to adapt to such a harsh environment. It was a testament to their ingenuity and determination qualities that had endeared them to the Concordate in the first place. But now, those same qualities took on a more sinister aspect in Zaxlith's mind. If humans were capable of transforming a dead world into a thriving colony, what else might they be capable of? And to what end? The coordinates led him to a seemingly unremarkable section of the canyon wall. As Zaxlith brought his transport to a hover, he scanned the area with growing frustration. There was nothing here. No hidden entrance. No sign of habitation. Just endless stretches of red rock. Then, just as he was about to give up and return to the spaceport, his sensors picked up a faint energy signature emanating from the canyon wall. It was similar to the one he had detected from the strange device on the Harmony, but much stronger. Heart pounding. Zaxlith maneuvered his transport closer to the source of the signal. As he did, a section of the rock face shimmered and disappeared, revealing a hidden entrance large enough to accommodate his vehicle. For a moment, Zaxlith hesitated. This was his last chance to turn back, to pretend he had never received that message or seen that device. But the thirst for knowledge that had driven him throughout his long life wouldn't let him walk away now. Taking a deep breath, he guided his transport into the hidden passage. The tunnel beyond was smooth and featureless, clearly artificial. It sloped gently downward, leading deeper into the heart of Mars. After several minutes of descent, the tunnel opened up into a vast underground cavern that took Zach Slith's breath away. The space was easily the size of the Concordic Council Chamber, but instead of the warm, living crystal of that familiar place, 
This cavern was filled with technology unlike anything Zaxlith had ever seen. Pulsing conduits of energy crisscrossed the walls and ceiling, feeding into banks of machines that hummed with barely contained power. At the center of it all stood a massive device that seemed to bend the very fabric of space around it, creating shimmering distortions in the air. But it wasn't the advanced technology that made Zaxlith's blood run cold. It was the beings operating it. They looked human, at first glance. But as Zaxlith watched, their form seemed to ripple and shift, revealing glimpses of something else beneath the human facade, something alien and terrifying. Before he could process what he was seeing, alarms began to blare throughout the cavern. Zaxlith realized with a start that in his awe, he had allowed his transport to drift too close to the central device. He had been detected. The not, quite, humans turned as one, their eyes fixing on Zaxlith with predatory intensity. He saw their mouths open, revealing rows of needle-like teeth that no human should possess. Panic overtook him. Zaxlith slammed his transport into reverse, racing back up the tunnel as fast as the vehicle could manage. Behind him, he could hear the sound of pursuit, a chittering, screeching noise that would haunt his nightmares for years to come. He burst out of the hidden entrance and into the Martian sky, pushing his transport to its limits as he fled towards the spaceport. Only when the massive bulk of Olympus Mons appeared on the horizon did he allow himself to relax lightly, certain that whatever had been chasing him wouldn't risk exposure in such a populated area. As Zaxlith's transport settled onto the landing pad at Olympus Mons spaceport, his mind raced with the implications of what he had seen. The humans, or at least some of them, were not what they appeared to be. They were harboring a terrible secret, one that threatened the very foundations of the Concordat. But who would believe him? He had no proof beyond his own testimony, and he knew how fantastical his story would sound. He needed allies people who could help him uncover the truth and expose the deception before it was too late. As if in answer to his unspoken plea, Zaxlith's comm unit chirped. A message from an unknown sender flashed across the screen. I know what you saw. Meet me at the Red Planet Lounge in one hour if you want to know more. Come alone and tell no one. The fate of the galaxy depends on it. Zaxlith stared at the message his heart's pounding. This was it. His chance to get answers, to find out what was really going on. But it could also be a trap, a way for whatever he had seen in that cavern to silence him before he could raise the alarm. In the end, his curiosity won out over his caution. He had come too far, seen too much to turn back now. Whatever the consequences, Zack Slith knew he had to see this through to the end. As he made his way through the crowded streets of Olympus Mons, Zaxlith couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. Every human face he passed seemed to hide secrets, and he found himself studying each one, looking for signs of the otherworldly presence he had glimpsed in the cavern. The Red Planet Lounge was a popular spot for off-duty terraformers and visiting dignitaries, known for its panoramic views of the Martian landscape and its discreet private booths. Zaxlith made his way to the bar, ordering a drink he had no intention of consuming as he scanned the room for any sign of his mysterious contact. Commander Zaxlith, a voice said from behind him. Zaxlith turned to find himself face to face with a human woman. She was short for her species, with dark skin and tightly coiled hair. Her eyes, a deep brown, held intensity that made Zaxlith's scales ripple with unease. Dr. Amara Kuri, she said, extending a hand in the human gesture of greeting. We should talk somewhere more private. Zaxlith hesitated for a moment before following her to a secluded booth in the back of the lounge. As they sat down, he noticed the way Dr. Kuri's eyes darted around the room as if checking for potential threats. I assume you're the one who sent me the coordinates, Zaxlith said, his voice low, and the message to meet you here. Dr. Curry nodded. I've been watching you, Commander. 
your investigation into human activities hasn't gone unnoticed. By whom? Zaxleth asked, leaning forward. What exactly is going on here? Dr. Curry, what I saw in that cavern was not human, she finished for him. At least, not entirely. Zach Slith felt a chill run through his body. Explain, he demanded. Dr. Curry took a deep breath. What I'm about to tell you will sound impossible, perhaps even insane, but I assure you, it's the truth. She paused as if gathering her thoughts. Humanity, as the Concord it knows it, is a lie. A carefully constructed facade hiding a terrifying reality. Go on, Zaxlith urged, his heart's racing. Approximately 200 Earth years ago, long before we made contact with the Concordat, humanity encountered something out in deep space. We thought it was a new form of energy, a miraculous discovery that would solve all our problems. We were wrong. Dr. Curry's voice dropped to a whisper. It was alive. Zach Slith felt his tentacles curl in revulsion. A fusion, Dr. Curry explained. Human and. Something else. We call it the whisper. It doesn't possess us, exactly. It. Changes us. But it also controls us, to an extent we're only beginning to understand. But how? Zach Slith asked struggling to comprehend the magnitude of what he was hearing. How has this been kept secret for so long? The Whisper is intelligent, Commander. It recognized the potential in humanity, our adaptability, our drive to explore and expand. It saw us as the perfect vehicle for its own spread across the galaxy. But it also knew that if other species discovered its existence, they would unite against us. Dr. Curry's eyes grew distant. So it crafted a new identity for humanity. Peaceful. Diplomatic. The perfect partners for a galactic civilization. It suppressed our more aggressive tendencies, enhanced our empathic abilities. Everything the Concordat believes about humans is technically true. But it's not the whole truth. Zach Slythe felt as if the ground was shifting beneath him. Everything he thought he knew about humans about the balance of power in the Concordat, was being called into question. Why are you telling me this? He asked finally. Why now? Dr. Curry's expression hardened. Because the whisper is getting stronger. Those of us who have managed to resist its influence, to maintain some semblance of our original selves, are growing fewer, and we believe it's preparing for something big. The serious agreement, Zach Slith breathed, the pieces falling into place. The terraforming technology. Is a Trojan horse, Dr. Curry confirmed. The whisper doesn't just change humans. It can adapt to and merge with other forms of life. If the Phalons use that technology, they'll be infected too, Zach Slythe finished, horror dawning on him. Dr. Curry nodded grimly. Exactly. We need your help, Commander. The Concordat must be warned, but if we come forward ourselves, we'll be dismissed as traitors or madmen. You've seen the evidence with your own eyes. You're our best hope of convincing the Council before it's too late. Zach Slith sat back, his mind reeling. The implications of what Dr. Curry had told him were staggering. If she was telling the truth, and his every instinct told him she was, then the entire Concordat was in imminent danger. But exposing this truth would mean upending the galactic order. Humans would likely be expelled from the Concordat, perhaps even quarantined. Centuries of progress and cooperation would be undone in an instant. And yet, the alternative was unthinkable. To allow this whisper to spread unchecked, to infect other species and slowly consume the galaxy. What do you need me to do? Zaxoth asked, his decision made. Dr. Curry's relief was palpable. We need proof that the Council can't ignore. I can get you access to one of our hidden research facilities. There, you'll find irrefutable evidence of the Whisper's existence and its plans. But it won't be easy. The facility is guarded by those fully under the Whisper's control. They'll stop at...
Nothing to keep this secret. Zaxlith nodded, a grim determination settling over him. I understand the risks. But this is bigger than any one of us. The truth must come out, whatever the cost. As they finalized their plans, Zaxlith couldn't help but reflect on the irony of the situation. He had started this investigation believing he might uncover some minor deception, some small secret that humans were keeping from their allies. Instead, he had stumbled upon a threat that could reshape the very fabric of galactic society. The humans avoided war, it seemed, not out of an inherent love for peace, but because they were fighting a war on a scale that no one else could see or understand, a war for the very soul of their species, and perhaps for the future of all sentient life in the galaxy. As Zax Lith left the Red Planet Lounge, his steps purposeful and his mind racing with plans, he knew that nothing would ever be the same again. The illusion of peace that had held the Concorde together for so long was about to shatter. And in its wake, a new chapter in galactic history would begin. One that would be written in the crucible of a conflict unlike any the universe had ever seen. The true war was just beginning.